guess it's time to go. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the conference as much as we do. Um, I'm Mikhail Barbero, and this is Tanya <coughs> Owadovich. Uh, we both work for the Eclipse Foundation, and today we'll talk about uh, Jakarta EE. Uh, so first of all, before going to the talk, I have a short question for you. Who is developing Java EE application, or who used to develop Java EE application? Awesome. <laughs> so um, you all know that for many, many years, Java EE has been, uh, mission critical, um, has been a major platform for mission-critical uh, enterprise application. And in order to uh, move faster and be able to innovate faster in a cloud-native world, uh, the leading um, vendors of Java application server have, um, have collaborated to move uh, what used to be named Java EE under a new brand uh, being Jakarta EE, and they decided to host it at the Eclipse Foundation. So that's the reason of the talk, and to show you that uh, everything will be open. So what do we mean by open? Uh, of course, we mean open source, uh, because open source software uh, is eating the world. Uh, so here are a couple of figures from um, a study from opensource.com uh, website. Um, so I'm pretty sure you're already convinced about that, and if you're not already, you, you should read more about this study. A uh, little note about this number. So 55% of the companies are actually using open source uh, in production. I guess that the 45% uh, left, they don't know that they're already using open source in production. But <laughs> So uh, everything is open and uh, will be done in the open source. Um, and why is that? Because we are actually the Eclipse Foundation, an open source software foundation. So you may know us more because of the Eclipse Java IDE. Who knows about the Eclipse Java IDE? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, so we are not only about the Eclipse Java IDE. Uh, we actually host uh, 350 projects, more than 350 projects at the Eclipse Foundation, and the Eclipse IDE is only one of them. Um, we are a not-for-profit um, software foundation. Uh, so we are um, financed by memberships, and we have actually uh, close to 300 uh, corporate members. And we also have individual, individual members, so those are the committers on the project, so the people who actually have um, write permission on the Git repositories, and we have uh, 1,500 of them uh, currently registered at the foundation. And we are also um, composed of professional staff that manage those projects and help with um, dealing with um, daily issues. And uh, we are about 40, 35 to today, and you see two of us today. <laughs> um, so what is the goal, the main goal of the Eclipse Foundation? Um, the main goal is to make the projects, the open source projects, successful. What does it mean to be uh, successful for an open source project from an Eclipse Foundation point of view? Um, it's to enable them to innovate fast, and also to be able to collaborate. So collaborate meaning to um, work in a business-friendly environment and to, to, to let even competitors collaborate on open source projects. To do that, the Eclipse Foundation uh, um, provides a framework to projects, and this framework is composed of four main parts. And the first one is, of course, infrastructure, because an open source project needs to be hosted. You need to put your source code somewhere. Uh, so we provide Git repositories. Uh, you need code reviews, so we provide Git services. Uh, you need build services also because you, you need to be uh, to have reproducible, reproducible builds to um, produce um, binaries. You need to host those binaries, so we provide also download servers. And all of this is maintained by professional staff. Uh, we also provide some flexibility to not use our own, only our own uh, services, but al also to use GitHub. So you can host your uh, repository at GitHub, but still be part of the Eclipse Foundation. And the second part of uh, this framework that we provide for a uh, successful project, or for projects that uh, uh, we want them to be successful, is uh, some processes and uh, governance. So we have very strong processes uh, that are applied to projects. So uh, we have uh, two uh, of them. So the, the last one is uh, the new one, and Tanya will talk more about it later. 
uh, but the, the Eclipse development process is very strict about uh, the, the, the life cycle of the project and how, for instance, you make a release, how to uh, be transparent in all your communication so you cannot... Um, we enforce the fact that a project must communicate publicly about uh, what is a roadmap, uh, what are the technical decisions, and so on. So everything must be uh, open and transparent. We also provide a vendor-neutral uh, governance. Uh, it means that nobody has uh, more privileges uh, than the others, so no company can own a project. Uh, everyone um, can become a committer on a project, independent of the fact that they are employees of some companies or uh, some uh, entities. And uh, we do all of that without taking uh, part of any of the technical decisions in projects, of course. So we are not involved in the development of the Eclipse ASI. If you find a bug in there, do not come to us. We don't fix them. <laughs> you need to go to the, the, the team that actually developed the project. The Eclipse Foundation is there to provide the framework for them. Um, the, the, the last, um, uh, the, the third part, sorry, of the, um, the framework that we provide to our project is uh, community development. So we do evangeliz <coughs> evangelization uh, during conferences like Technology Jacks, but we also organize conferences on our own. So we have EclipseCon, maybe you've heard about, that, about it already. So we, we have one in Germany, in uh, Ludwigsburg, uh, two, three weeks ago. Um, and we, used to, you know, we organized also some uh, in France and uh, some in North America as well. And we can help you also to uh, mm, create an event if you want, dedicated to your own project. And we also provide strong IP management and licensing. So we have um, a, a, some lawyers in the staff uh, that actually uh, entitled to uh, check the provenance of the dependencies of the projects and to check the compatibility of the licenses. So when a project wants to depend on a third-party library, for instance, uh, you have to go to a lawyer and uh, ask them, okay, can I use it? And what they will do is they will go through the whole history of the dependency and check whether there has been some change in the license that has not been properly done or whether there has been some contributions that are a bit shady and so on. So we provide all of this to ensure that when a project do a release, then it's uh, clean from an IP point of view. Um, so that's what we provide to our projects. And today, of course, we are not there to talk on about the Eclipse Foundation. We are here to talk about the cloud-native Java. And uh, we listed there a um, handful of the Eclipse project that we own today that uh, are hosted at the foundation. And the first one, the Eclipse MicroProfile. Who heard about Eclipse MicroProfile micro already? Great. Uh, half of you. So there has been a couple of talks already yesterday. I'm not sure if there are tomorrow. Um, so MicroProfile is a project that uh, is born from complaints of the community that Java E was not moving fast enough. Uh, it's been creating two years and a half ago. And it's more about defining uh, a, a subset of Java E dedicated to create um, microservices in Java. So you can see it as a Java E Lite plus additional specification uh, for uh, microservices at Java application development. Vertex, um, who knows Vertex? Uh, <coughs> a bit less. Uh, Vertex is a, Java, um, a framework for creating a reactive application in Java. So it's been created in 2011, I think, so it's quite old already. And it was doing reactive programming before reactive programming was actually a thing. <laughs> so if you want to learn more, I'm encouraging you to have a look at that. And OpenG9, uh, who knows about OpenG9? So I talk at the same time as ours. <laughs> okay, nobody. Uh, OpenG9 is a JVM implementation. So it's a Java virtual machine implementation. Very performant, very fast, and designed to work in constrained environment. So it should very well with the use case of uh, deploying Java application in uh, cloud-native environments. And of course, the last one is Jakarta IE. And I will give the, the mic, or just shut, my, shut mine down, <laughs> <laughs> and leave Tanya talk to you about it. Thank you. So now that we confused you with Mikhail's accent, you won't have to deal with my accent. OK, so um, we already talked a little bit what Jakarta E is. So it is the continuation of uh, Java E specification. So last version of Java E specification is Java E 8. 
and the whole code uh, has been contributed from Oracle uh, to Eclipse Foundation. We are super excited about it, and um, we are strong believers that uh, there is uh, many, many years to come of successful Jakarta EE. So uh, how does Jakarta E impact um, Eclipse Foundation? So um, it is a massive undertaking to move uh, Java E code to uh, Eclipse Foundation. So for us, it resulted in 39 new projects, which is quite a bit, um, 99 Git repositories, uh, you can see number of committers and number of pipelines. And just to remind you, there is only 35 of us. So, yes, this was a, a major impact on uh, Eclipse uh, Foundation. And what does that really mean in, in, in numbers? So, um, you can see over there that uh, on, on this beautiful graph that it is about 15 to 20% of the whole community activity um, uh, uh, within Eclipse Foundation. And um, for our IP team that was checking, um, you know, all the intellectual properties, it is uh, just in, in uh, 2018 dealing with uh, um, uh, Java EE, it is 30% increase comparing to the whole year of 2017. So for us, um, this is really a huge deal. And I'm hoping it's for you as well. So um, just kind of looking at um, uh, all the projects that uh, were contributed to um, uh, from Oracle to Eclipse Foundation. Um, this little graph here, or diagram uh, rather, is showing um, all the projects, all 39 of them. And... Um, this, the ones that uh, did not reach 80%, and this is the 80%, are not expected to, to, to reach that point yet. Um, but all other ones that we wanted from Oracle to be contributed are already at 80%, which means all the code is at, uh, at the Eclipse Foundation repository, and projects are entering the final uh, stage, which is uh, um, release review. Uh, the first release review, and, and we're working towards um, making that happen. So, um, in order to talk about Jakarta EE, we want to really uh, talk about two major things, and we want Jakarta EE to be associated with the brand and with the working group. And what is the working group? So the work, working group is, is a, we can call it the governing body. Um, it is an, an industry consortium uh, that consists of, of members that are um, from different companies, and that they are overlooking the development of the Jakarta EE. So um, uh, we already mentioned, uh, or actually Mikhail mentioned, um, work on the specification and specification process. So the working group is definitely involved in that. And actually, for each of the version of the specifications that are going to be part of Jakarta EE, the um, working group will be responsible for approving the specifications. Um, as I mentioned, the working group is going to manage the brand as well, right? So uh, that is the important part and role of the, um, of the working group. Um, and then, you know, uh, direction, technical direction, the roadmap. Um, while it's not going to be only their say, they are going to, uh, to be responsible to enforce the, the, the roadmap and technical direction. Community feedback and community um, um, desire on, on what is going to be part of the specification is definitely uh, part of it. So what else is important when we're talking about uh, uh, the working group? One of the, the, the most important things, and I think benefits to all of us who are interested in enterprise Java development, is the vendor neutrality. So we want to make sure that everyone who is involved has uh, the equal say, and it doesn't matter whether they're uh, enterprises, vendors, system integrators, uh, developers, you know, anyone who is uh, a part of the working group 
uh, has has a um, uh, um, you know can can have their say. We're also um, uh, the working group is also uh, there to revise the um, processes. So we're currently at the stage where Eclipse uh, Foundation specification process is just to be uh, uh, finally uh, released as version 1.1. We'll talk about it in, in, in a moment. And then also uh, we want to make sure that uh, certification is done for the very first time through the open TCK. So kind of looking into the TCK, let's just... Uh, make sure we understand what exactly does that mean, having open source TCK. So all these four principles that we're listing here are not necessarily only tied to the TCK. However, um, we do want to, um, you know, the most excited news, the exciting news of this whole process for, for um, the community seems to have seems to be that we are now having TCK open source. So that's why we're focusing on this uh, four principles on the TCK, but it can be applied to, to any other aspect of having the, the um, uh, Jakarta E being open source. So um, those four are transparency and each one leads to another, right? So transparency, everyone now has insight into what is going on in that test, right? How do we test the code and what does it mean, um, you know, uh, someone passed a certain test? And if something is wrong with a test, absolutely the community can uh, let us know what that is and, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, comment and participate and contribute with alternative uh, um, uh, way of testing it. So, that obviously is uh, uh, requesting community uh, participation, and that leads to openness. So openness for everyone to, to be part of it and to greater pool of contributors. Um, it is, uh, as we were saying, equal opportunity, and that is something that is very, very important to us. Um, and with that, it leads to a shared burden. So shared responsibility uh, for, for, for the code. Um, and uh, you know what, uh, it, it really um, is also uh, meaning that it's, there is no dependency to a single organization, right? So um, uh, how we can uh, differently say that, it's vendor neutrality and continuity. If for any reason one of the uh, working group uh, participants decides that they cannot be part of the um, uh, group or part of the uh, um, uh, working group any anymore. Um, there is uh, uh, no dependency on that single entity, and we can have a uh, continuity with with uh, with the uh, specification. So, who are ja Jakarta e working group members? So, um, please go ahead on uh, Jakarta e uh, site and 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 have a look on on how to become uh, a member. But here is uh, what we have today. Um, we're listing strategic and participating members. Um, and we are inviting all of you to um, find a way to participate and become a member of a working group. And we're hoping we'll, you'll do that right after this talk. So the working group also, or at least um, the working group is divided in, in a couple of different groups as well. And some of them are responsible for different aspects. One of the groups um, is uh, uh, responsible for uh, technical um, direction, uh, roadmaps, but we also have uh, a guiding principles um, that are listed on this website, um, uh, just right here. I will not go into any of these, um, uh, you know, in details, but um, this is more of an invitation for you to go and check it out. Two things that I would uh, point out, however, is we are definitely open for innovation and um, we're uh, uh, very much looking into um, uh, frequent or far frequent, far more frequent releases than what uh, Java EE used to have. So um, 
do check it out. Do let us know what you think, and 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 uh, 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 please get familiar with the with the technical uh, direction guiding principles. So, just looking at the um, roadmap and being a little bit more specific on where we are at and where we are going. So, um, uh, last year, uh, Oracle uh, has released. Uh, Glassfish 5. Oracle Glassfish 5.0, that is um, Java E8 certified. Uh, since then, we've been working really, really hard on uh, making sure that the whole code uh, uh, relevant to Java EE has been contributed to um, Eclipse Foundation, and uh, we're just about uh, getting ready to release. Uh, Eclipse Glassfish 5.1, and we want to make sure for back compatibility reasons that it is going to be Java E8 uh, certified, right? Um, and after that, so so uh, also I just want to mention, I, I will um, uh, point out that uh, later as well, um, we released just a couple of weeks ago, the, the, the release candidate. So there is a release candidate out there for Eclipse Glassfish 5.1. Um, if you want to check it out and see what's going on there, please do. And then from the roadmap perspective, um, we're also planning to finally release Eclipse Glassfish 5.2. Uh, that is then going to be Jakarta E8 uh, certified. Jakarta E8 is going to be the first Jakarta uh, EE release, and it is going to be based on Java E8. Um, all of this is the process to, uh, of course, ensure back compatibility and making sure that nothing is uh, broken in this migration uh, during this migration process. So, where are we at this point? Um, so, as I said, the source code has been contributed. Um, I just uh, think I, I just mentioned the RC1 uh, release candidate is, is available. Uh, we're providing nightly builds, and, and uh, the, uh, the link is right here. Um, so, Eclipse uh, Foundation specification process is at the final stages. We're expecting very, very shortly to um, uh, put the, the process as version 1.1 out there. Uh, we finished the uh, community review of the draft on the 31st of October, I believe. So, um, um, you know, gathering the, 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 the feedback and, and finalizing it is, is uh, uh, where we're at. Um, and then we also got the proposal for the first specification to test the process. And um, as soon as we have the version 1.0 uh, um, out uh, for the specification process, we are going to uh, go and use Jakarta E no SQL um, uh, specification uh, to, to test the process. So um, the so here is the overall specification process. Do you want me to go ahead? Sure. Okay. So does this look scary to you? Well, I hope not. So if you look at it from the um, you know all the reviews, if you skip uh, all, all the reviews, um, you are basically looking at the proposal um, going through the uh, development, uh, going to uh, milestone, milestone builds and, 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 you know, doing more iterative development cycle, then um, uh, once you're at the, at the um, version that you want to uh, call it a, a complete work, you are going to uh, go through the process to make it um, final specification. And then once the final specification is done, you're going to uh, the loop again and um, uh, basically create a new version of the specification because every specification has multiple versions. Now, what is the, uh, the review? So the review there is for um, uh, different um, uh, parts of uh, or, or members of a working group to ensure that 
that the process is followed, that everything is uh, um, um, as as we expect, you know, and and making sure that things are in, in order. Um, the proposal here acts as a, as a initial. So for for the first time, when you're creating a new specification, the proposal acts as a, as a plan. Uh, so so th this is the initial uh, part of the uh, pro uh, specification creation. If has um, is anyone here familiar with Eclipse development process? Okay, so. If you are, if you were working with any uh, Eclipse project, you would be using Eclipse development uh, uh, process. This specification process is heavily based on the Eclipse development process. Eclipse development process has been around for uh, as long as Eclipse uh, uh, Foundation is so about uh, 14 15 years and uh, uh, if you are using ID you know that uh, using the eclipse development process we were always on time uh, delivering the uh, new um, uh, versions of the uh, eclipse ID so it's it's very well tested process uh, and uh, we decided that uh, we will just uh, uh, expand it a little bit and uh, use that process as a base for um, Eclipse specification process, Eclipse Foundation specification process. If you're interested to, um, to talk about more um, uh, about the uh, Eclipse Foundation process, please um, do let me know. But this is a, a gist of it. So let's just quickly uh, focus on some key differences between Java community process and uh, Eclipse uh, uh, foundation process. Um, and uh, one of the, 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 the first um, uh, big differences is that uh, JCP is focusing on uh, development of the specification first, whereas um, uh, uh, in Jakarta, we're going to do and propose coding first. Once the code uh, um, shows that something is worthwhile putting it into a specification, then we'll, we will do that. The other difference is that uh, um, uh, uh, in JCP, you had uh, uh, the specification lead who was controlling uh, uh, the development of the specification. In this... Uh, multiple vendor uh, working group situation, we have a process that is more collaborative. So we don't have a, a special role uh, that is uh, uh, um, uh, deciding on the specification process, but it's, it's, a, uh, it's a collaborative process, right? Um, both of the processes are um, using public communication on where things are, so there is no change there. Um, in JCP, documents and TCKs are um, uh, closed source, uh, where at uh, um, uh, Jakarta E or Eclipse uh, uh, Foundation specification process, documents and TCKs are uh, open sourced. And then another difference is that with uh, JCP, um, we had a reference uh, implementation, and that is the uh, Glassfish. Right, uh, with the uh, uh, Eclipse Foundation, uh, we are going to have one or more compatible implementations that will affirm uh, uh, feasibility of the specification. So, what that means is that um, different implementations of the space uh, of the specification are um, uh, equal. There is no favorite uh, uh, implementation. So uh, now that we're um, with it, all this work, um, we are turning to the community and asking uh, what exactly uh, uh, are the needs, um, your needs for development of Jakarta EE. So before our uh, Eclipse uh, conference um, uh, a couple of weeks ago in, in, in Ludwigsburg, we put uh, an email out to the community uh, asking uh, uh, what we should focus on. 
And uh, we got 74 answers in a week, which was, you know, uh, uh, very encouraging. And here are the responses, right? So uh, besides the technical uh, requests, um, this is what we got. Uh, it seems that community is very eager and interested um, and uh, ready to get involved. So um, I'm hoping that uh, we got uh, some answers there from you guys. But if we didn't, uh, please uh, um, join the uh, community uh, mailing list and uh, we will um, uh, regularly ask for the community input and, and let us know what your needs are. So, uh, welcome developers. Um, we are definitely open for uh, uh, innovation, uh, for faster releases, and we're interested to, to hear from you. Um, go into the Jakarta e slash connect uh, and see, yeah, this is a little burb. Yeah, we, 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 we don't need help from anybody, but um, yeah, uh, developers are um, uh, definitely uh, needed. So let us know what you, what you need. Um, subscribe to the mailing list um, uh, and uh, um, invite your company to uh, participate in open source and uh, let's innovate together. Keep calm and long live Jakarta E. Okay. okay, so um, I think that's uh, wrapping up our presentation, uh, but we would like to hear if you have any questions, comments. Um, is this confusing? Is this helpful? Let us know. Yeah, go ahead. No, they're not closed source. They're open source at Eclipse Foundation. Yes. So that's that's. Uh, um, I don't want to flip through the through the slides, but what I showed you in the diagram with uh, tons of little lines, uh, thirty nine projects. That's exactly uh, what it is. So all thirty nine projects from. Uh, Oracle are now in repositories, Eclipse Foundation repositories, um, and uh, we are um, making them, they are going to be base for um, Jakarta E8 that is definitely open source. Yeah. Right. Correct. So Jersey becomes Eclipse Jersey, and it's now at the Eclipse Foundation. So it's hosted on GitHub, but it's on the, uh, an organization um, managed by the Eclipse Foundation, a GitHub organization managed by the Eclipse Foundation. And <laughs> Glassfish is becoming, uh, has, become, has been translated to Eclipse Glassfish and so on for all the uh, reference implementations. Any other question? Okay, so if you have any other question later on, uh, we have a booth on the first floor, uh, just uh, around the corner, so feel free to uh, come to us and we'll be there until tomorrow night, so feel free to, to come to us. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.